Achilles tendons tend to be a pretty disabling injury with a prolonged recovery to baseline and a challenging active patient population that has a very high functional expectation. Most commonly we see these patients are older than 30 years old, they're male, and they have a mechanism of injury that involves a direct quick change in acceleration or speed. It's most commonly seen in soccer, tennis, basketball. The patient will often relate that they've heard a loud pop, may have fallen to the ground, and may have thought that someone has hit them in the leg. On physical exam, it's quite often that we find a large tendon gap and we have a positive Thompson test indicating that the heel is no longer attached to the Achilles tendon. Patients will often complain that they're unable to stand up on their toes and they have calf pain and muscle spasm. There's a lot of discussion in regards to operative versus non-operative repair for Achilles tendons. In terms of discussing indications for operative repair, I like to look for a near or complete rupture, a patient that has significant loss of function, a patient that has the desire to return to a previous high level of activity in an efficient manner, and that they have acceptable general health risks. When first evaluating a patient, I like to look at the opposite side. This helps me evaluate the tension that I'd like to set my repair at. I position the patient in a prone position, identify the site of rupture, and make a longitudinal incision over the site of rupture. I make full thickness flaps through the peritinon in order to preserve the soft tissue. I try to maintain gentle soft tissue retraction for closure later, and then the proximal tendon is isolated as seen in the picture here. Moving on with the repair, I use a locking Krakow suture in the proximal portion of the tendon, and I then plantar flex the ankle in order to deliver the distal tendon stump into my surgical incision. Moving distally to the calcaneus, I'll drill my anchor holes and tap them. I'll then retrieve the suture tails with the suture lasso and bring them out through the percutaneous calcaneus holes. I'll often at this time look at the plantar flexion and set it by pulling my sutures tight and clipping it with a hemostat against the skin in order to set it similar to my preoperative tension on the contralateral side. I'll then secure the tendon with the swivel lock anchors. After the repair is done, I'll test the strength of the repair by dorsiflexing the ankle to neutral dorsiflexion. If I see any tendon gapping or any loosening of the repair, I'll add some additional locking sutures at that time. Then I will close the peritinon and close the skin in a standard layered fashion. Postoperative rehab begins at the first visit at two weeks after surgery. I'll evaluate the sutures, take them out if the wound appears to be healed, and often progress them to beginning weight bearing with the protection of a boot. I'll allow the patient to wean crutches as tolerated at that point and begin range of motion and strengthening exercises under the guidance of physical therapy. Between four and six weeks, the patient will come back for another visit and begin to wean their boot as they're tolerated. From six weeks on, the patient will progress with physical therapy with a variety of exercises, and typically I'll follow this patient for three to five months until they're able to successfully perform a single leg heel rise. Uh, my results so far have been very good. I've been very impressed with the early return to function, especially with weight bearing. All of my patients have begun progressive weight bearing at the two week visit, and all patients have then weaned out of their protective cam walker boot sometime between four and six weeks after surgery. I specifically had had one patient who, against advice, even jogged a 5K at nine weeks after surgery. One patient I had with an early fall who fell down, who thankfully did not rupture. One patient who returned to work five weeks earlier than a coworker who ruptured during the same weekend. And an additional patient who played ice hockey at 12 weeks after surgery. I feel that there's many advantages to using this technique to repair the Achilles in the modern surgical setting. You can use a small incision, avoid the complications of a distal surgical incision. Uh, there is less scarring a tension-free repair site that improves pain. It's a stronger repair that does not rely solely on the tissue quality of the torn tendon. And in my hands, I've seen earlier return to daily activities, early return to work, and earlier return to sporting activities, all with a low rate of complications.